those lineups as you were just introduced to them. Great matchup in the middle. We'll keep an eye on Trace Jackson Davis and Kofi Coburn all game long. Time to welcome in the third member of our crew, Rick Pizzo. And Rick, there's one fighting lineup that we won't see today, isn't there? Jacob Grandison not in the starting lineup for a second sweep. There's no ill intentions between the two, but there's no love loss either. And two of the best posts in a terrific post league going to work. Trace Jackson Davis and Kofi Cobra tip controlled by Illinois. And the co-champs on the floor for the first time here in Indy. And we'll see what they start out with. Looks like a high screen roll with Kofi. And Plummer will get going early with a three. Alfonso Plummer, what a revelation he's been for the lineup. Well, I tell you what, uh, you know, averaging 15 a game, and he's been a little up and down down the stretch in terms of his uh, accuracy and consistency, but he can do that all night long. He's the Big Ten in three pointers made per game. Led the Pac 12 a year ago at Utah in that same category. Trace Jackson Davis inside against Kofi Coburn. Well, Trace went quick, didn't he? We saw yesterday he was a little hesitant against Michigan. Not today. And slow start. Only five points in the first half yesterday for Trace Jackson Davis. Here's Coleman Hawkins back out to Trent Frazier. Good side for the Illini. He was a struggle in the Iowa game on Sunday. He did. And, you know, you don't expect Trent to struggle two games in a row as a veteran and knows how to get himself ready to play. He's played nearly 4,800 minutes in an Illinois uniform. Working inside. That's some tough work by Race Thompson. Coleman Hawkins on the defensive end as Frazier will bring it up. Well, Coleman Hawkins is a great example of the depth of the Illini. Different positions that they can go deep in. Colbert, deep position inside against Trace Jackson Davis, but the rebound off the miss for Davis. Well, great job by Coleman Hawkins. They're on the catch. Race Thompson staying with it, just couldn't get it to go. Devontae Williams soaring in for the rebound. This Illinois team on the last day, the last game of the season, thanks to Nebraska's win over Wisconsin earlier Sunday, able to claim a share of the conference championship. Pocket kick, but Hawkins able to get it back. A 40 minute celebration ensued that once everybody left the arena, it continued well into the night in Champaign. Williams. For in the corner, instead found one of the camera folks on the baseline. Brad Underwood saying those are not eligible players. Please don't pass to them. I think Brad Underwood's been the best coach in the Big Ten the last three years. Doesn't get a lot of credit for what he's done, especially this season. Curbelo was out two months. Kofi Coburn uh, suspended early in the season. They've been injury ridden. But they have found themselves to be the number one seed here for all of them. Harper Stewart with a good baseline jumper to get Indiana back on the board. Two-point game. That's, that's big for Stewart. Really wasn't a factor yesterday. Wasn't aggressive looking for a shot. Which is about seven points per game on the year does Parker Stewart. They've got a lot of faith in him. Last week took the final shot against Rutgers. Coburn working inside. What he a good position down low, and he'll go to the free throw line. After the first Indiana foul, inside of Trace Jackson Davis. Well, you have to pick your poison against the Illini. You're either going to guard Kofi inside or you're going to guard the perimeter. Very difficult to do both. And what you're seeing right now, Indiana doing a good job collapsing defensively. But then in the Illinois shooters coming into the vision of the passers, getting good looks early on. Kofi to the line. These two teams met once this season. Illinois won 74-57 in that game. Coburn scored 17 in that matchup. One more to go for Kofi Coburn. There's Mike Woodson. He was elated. He told our Rick Pizzo after the game yesterday he thought that was enough to get them in to the NCAA tournament. A win today would certainly help those chances for IU. Uh, I can tell that it was, it was serious because Mike Woodson brought his old teammate in, Randy Whitman came in and to provide some support and some extra eyeballs and a, a former Indiana great former uh, NBA coach. So Mike Woodson pulling out all stops here. Grace Thompson. Looking inside. Thompson's been active early and finally gets one to drop. 0 for 2 to start. Yeah, Grace Thompson, you know, I, I thought he was going to come out a lot more aggressively this afternoon. And he has done that. 
He was good in that February meeting against these two. 13 points for Race Thompson in a losing effort for Indiana. Xavier Johnson, a fast start yesterday, then ran into foul trouble. In the corner, Miller Cops three or drop. Boy, if he can consistently hit a little fist pump for Miller Cop, he knows how big that is. Oh, yeah. And he, you know, him being in Northwestern, he knows a lot about this Illinois squad. <laughs> Been playing against him for years and knowing that he needs to give his team a boost early. Alfonso Plummer. Crossover gets him deep. Tough made away using the window, but it caroms through the hands of Coburn into the hands of Johnson. Well, I'll tell you what. Indiana's doing a really good job on the defensive glass. Illinois, one of the better offensive rebounding teams, but haven't been on it yet. Oh, that's tough. Xavier Johnson was being bodied by Trent Frazier all the way to that corner. I'll tell you what. Xavier Johnson's been arguably their best player in the end of the last month. Trace Jackson Davis able to chase that one down in the corner just a step quicker than Kofi on that play. I'm telling you, Indiana has started this game much better than they did yesterday against Michigan. They look locked in. They were a step slow defensively early on, but not today. Jackson Davis bumping into Coburn. Big battle down low, and the left-hand hook wins that battle. You know, you know why he did that, Kevin? He wants to negate Kofi's ability to block the shot, so if you bang him, he can't get off the floor. Kofi getting a little discouraged there. He wanted the, he wanted the ball in the post and didn't get it. Plummer will give it to him down low. And a foul will send Coburn to the line. <laughs> Indiana with the hot start of five early. Kofi Coburn. Well, I know we're going to see four of these five dunk leaders in the morning session today. Amori and Murray in our second game. Trace Jackson, Davis, and Kofi Coburn, obviously, in this game. Yeah, and I, I wish, you know, we we had a snoop camera on us that the viewers could see our faces because Kevin and I are like little kids over here uh, being able to call these games and see these players, man. It's there's nothing like the Big Ten Conference Tournament here in Indy, I'm telling you. Like quarterfinal Friday is just the best. If you're a fan picking one day to come to a tournament, quarterfinal Friday is the one I recommend. I agree. Totally yeah. agree. Those are great games. Three points for Coburn as Johnson will walk it up for Indiana. Hit their last five shots have the Hoosiers after a one for three start. Trace Jackson Davis exploding down the baseline. Coburn sealing him off. Lost the handle on the ball into the hands of Race Thompson. And Thompson, good patience, couldn't get it to go. Williams with a rebound. Nice job by Kofi Coburn. He knew he couldn't corral with two hands. Tapped it over to a teammate so they could get possession. Straight to Coburn, double team comes. And a dig down by Thompson. He commits the personal foul. His first, team's third. Andre Carvello is in the game now for Illinois for the specific reason of trying to speed up the tempo. Brad Underwood is on the sidelines, very demonstrative, urging his team to go faster. During that last time out, he was telling them we do not want to get into a half-court game with Indiana. We need to push. If we're going to get the ball into Kofi, get it in quick and get it back out quick. He is forcing tempo by having Carvello in the game. Expect Illinois to pick up the pace. Goody will try to get it going with a quick three off the inbound and the rebound by Miller Cobb of Indiana. Here's this Indiana pace yes. now. Slow it down, walk it up. Yeah, and you know, Indiana is so good half court defensively as well that you don't want to have to face them each and every time walking it up the floor. Got a whistle and a foul on the baseline. Thompson cutting from the far side to the near. Goody got a piece of him as he came through. That'll be the first on Goody and the first team foul on Illinois. Both coaches really going to their bench early on here. You know, obviously for Indiana because they played yesterday and had that emotional come from behind win. Brad Underwood trying to get multiple guys lathered up here in the first half. Omar Payne on the floor, RJ Melendez. Back the last couple of games after the appendectomy on the floor. Ball to handle for Thompson, able to secure it and save it for Cobb, who has an open look for three. It won't drop. Melendez fortunate there went for the steal. Left Cobb with a good look. And now the lob ahead to Payne, but he can't finish with two hands. Well, that's a great job of the line out on the fast break, though. Advancing via the pass, and Omar Payne running the floor hard. 
to the pace that Brad Underwood wants to see. Johnson inside, so it slithers through traffic, but that won't drop. Curbelo will push it again to Melendez. Now Melendez on the attack. Short, rebound, tipped out to Cop. Yeah, Melendez lost his balance there, making his move. He had the right idea. We'll get stronger as he gets as he, longer as he's here. Oh, that's a tough shot for Johnson trying to cross over Goody. He did a pretty good job staying in front. Corbello now on the push. Oh, behind the back. <laughs> and he left it just short of the rim. Corbello, they're lurking, able to get the rebound, and he'll go to the free throw line. My goodness, he's a magician in the open floor. Yeah, that, this is right here. Crossover dribble, wrap around. Where's Parker Stewart? He's not there. And just misses the bunny. He can't believe it. Well, this is why he's out here. Look at this outlet pass. He's always got his head up, able to initiate the fast break, and that should have been an easy two for the Illini. Yeah, that's a couple of missed at the rim for Illinois over the last minute and a half. And Rick Pisa was all over, you know, capturing what Brad Underwood and his staff were trying to do against kind of this really staunch Indiana defense. Thompson with his second foul that'll send him to the bench. Parker Stewart heads to the bench as well for IU. Trey Galloway played some excellent minutes for Indiana yesterday, along with Michael Durr on the floor for Indiana. Indiana's got some nice depth as well. I mean, they can go to the bench and change things up a little bit. Durr may not be the offensive threat that Trace Jackson Davis is, but he's sure a big body, loves to defend, takes up a lot of space. There's Durr. At the top, Johnson will get involved against Curbelo. Durr with the screen. Johnson working hard against Curbelo. Got him in the air, rejected by Payne. Nine to shoot. Indiana with the basketball. Galloway to work inside off oh, the window. Nice. Trey Galloway. Man, I'll tell you what. Took his time to kind of change paces a little bit. Goes off the glass. That is a pretty move. Best fire in the three. This one won't go. It popped with the rebound. I tell you, man, I'm, I'm impressed with the Hoosier start here. They've really gotten the game to the pace that they like. Uh, trip's going to be called a foul. Illinois missed their last nine shots. They haven't hit a field goal in over seven minutes. Still down just five. Galloway providing a little spark. Well, that running hook. The line I've had their struggles at times throughout the year where they go with these lapses offensively, but. And their defense so far has been able to keep them within striking distance. Corbello with his first foul before the timeout. Colbert back on the floor. Plummer out there as well. Galloway working against Plummer. Fortunate to keep the possession, and then Indiana turns it over. Geronimo looking to get it to Durr. Durr wasn't looking. Yeah, you know, Geronimo, you think he's going to go up. He's so athletic. You think he's going to go up and power at home. I'm sure Durr was trying to get an offensive rebound in position. First turnover for Indiana. Coleman Hawkins looking inside to Coburn. Looking against Durr down low and just can't connect. Coburn 0 for 2. Well, that's point blank range, though. High percentage shot for the Illini. This 10 straight shots now as Illinois. Haven't made a field goal outside of the first minute of this game. Finnessy will drop it off, not Galloway. Entry to Durr. Jumper will not go. Coleman Hawkins, that really such an asset. Yes, it is. I mean, he went out of out of his position to round that rebound. Bella will feed Hawkins. Coleman Hawkins got his man in the air. That'll be a foul on Jordan Geronimo. His first 15 foul on Indiana. And you're looking at this inside battle. Yeah. 285 on one side. <laughs> you got 250 on the other side. I mean, there's a lot of sparks coming out of that paint. Final 11 02 yesterday. They allowed 31 points. They scored 31 points. 10 of 15 shooting, allowing 9 points in the process. So everything clicked in that final 10 and change against Michigan down the stretch. Well, and, you, and when you look at those numbers and you go back and look at yesterday's game, a lot of those were breakouts. Okay. Michigan turnovers. Trace Jackson Davis got a dunk. I believe uh, Xavier Johnson got on the break. They, you know, they were off and running because of their defense. 
five for two on that trip. Tamar Bates checks in, the six-five freshman. We did not see him yesterday. And I, I think they're, you know, with, when you look at freshmen as talented as Bates, if they're not playing, there must be something on the defensive end that they're not picking up as well as the coach would like. He gets another opportunity this afternoon. Let's see if he takes advantage. Four-point game, despite the fact that Illinois hasn't hit a field goal in eight and a half minutes. Finnessy, his pull-up jumper off, and the rebound for Coburn. Illinois well, looking to push here. Corbell will leave it for Plummer. See, when you initiate your offense with that kind of speed, now Trent pulled it out, but Illinois had a good rhythm going there before he reset this offense set. Frazier, Plummer got an open look, and he left it short. Nothing going right for Illinois on the offensive end. And they're getting good looks, Kevin, and so at some point you think that if you're in a lineup, then you would hope that some of those start to drop. Bates can't get it to go. We have been stuck in this 15-11 land for quite some time. Frazier around the Coburn screen. That's That'll beautiful. break the spell and a chance for one more at the line. That is beautiful. Trent Frazier keeps it in his left hand, his strong hand. Keeps it away from the defender. Take a look. You're going to see coming off the screen right here. It comes right downhill. Durr is late on the challenge. Tries to go for the block, the contact, the concentration, and one opportunity. It is pretty remarkable. If you're Illinois, 9.56 remaining in the first half. You have just come out of an 0 for 11 spell from the floor. And as Trent Frazier goes to the line, you look at the scoreboard at the end of that 0 for 11, you're down one point. I mean, that's a remarkable accomplishment defensively yeah. to stay in this game during one of the longest droughts that you've had in a first half this season. Yeah, that's a great point, Kevin. And, you know, that's why... You young viewers that want to have aspirations of playing basketball at this level, you better get the defensive end right if you want to play at this level. Because your offense will come and go, but your defense can try. Well, this defense for Illinois has held Indiana now to one for their last nine in this span. Galloway driving inside. But he is nifty and fluid as he flows towards the rim. And he's a lot stronger, Kevin, than most people think. I mean, he's able to hold off Kofi that time on the finish. That's impressive. With Coburn inside against Trace Jackson Davis. He made that one look easy. He did, and he got that wing on the side of Trace Jackson Davis and a lot used it to propel himself to the rim. There's Galloway. Driving inside again and with the touch for Trey Galloway. Boy, he had Demonte Williams on him like a second skin, yep. and he's still able to score. That's the third time he's made that same move, going right off glass. Frazier, no. Tip try by Coburn, yes. Here comes the offense and an avalanche on both sides. Yeah, it was much needed for the fans' sake because they're a little, a little quiet right now. been the spark for Indiana. Three for three, six points in four minutes. Here's Finnessy. Lost the handle, able to get it back before Coleman Hawkins could get there. Geronimo screaming his last name as he went up for that dunk and his foul oh, on yeah. the way down. I don't know. I don't know about that one. Kevin. Let's take a look. I thought Geronimo but, uh, I, I can see it. There's contact there as he's trying to follow through. I, I can see it. As you can see that Kofi Coburn, before those two buckets offensively, was visibly frustrated on the floor. Indiana was doing a great job not letting him catch the ball down low. Thought he had been fouled. When he spent three or four minutes on the bench after that under-16 timeout, it wasn't about getting rest. The coaching staff was trying to calm him down to make sure he didn't get so frustrated that he got into foul trouble. You can see now on the defensive end, Trey Galloway able to go around him, and then he picks up the foul right now. Something interesting to watch. Coburn's mental attitude moving on from this situation. Now, he really was in a discussion, heated discussion with Trent Frazier at the first media timeout as they left the floor. We'll see if that carries over as the game goes on. They weren't mad at each other. They were just aggressively coaching each other at that moment. Yeah, and good teams with really good chemistry like the Atlanta have, they do that all the time. Plummer, high degree of difficulty on that shot. Trace Jackson Davis 
a little easier to get the board without Kofi Coburn on the floor. And I'll tell you what, Trace did an excellent job defensively because he didn't have to foul. Oh, nice hands. Coleman Hawkins got a piece. Frazier will bounce it back to Hawkins. Run on the floor and it slipped out of his palm on the way up. Boy, Brad Underwood is beside himself on the sideline right now. Finnessy in the corner. That three rebounded by Williams. A 21-18 IU lead. Illinois with the ball. Right here, Matt Frazier looking to be a little bit more aggressive. And Hawkins with the three. He only shoots it at about a 26% clip, but he made that one look good. Well, he knew he was, he's coming out of the game because so good he's at the, <laughs> at the scores table. And a timeout with 7.29 remaining in the first half. Indiana uses the timeout. Hawkins gets Illinois even. Well, I'll tell you what, if you know the tournament, as is... Mike Woodson's Indiana Hoosiers team. Mike DeCourcy's updated last four in as of today. He's got Indiana as that last four in. They didn't budge much after their win against Michigan. A win over Illinois would budge them significantly. Oh, I totally agree. And I, I think, you know, you, Indiana has their destiny in their own hands. And that's all you can really ask for in this position. Out of bounds. It'll belong to Illinois. There was some contact on that release, but Trace Jackson Davis didn't seem to mind. He, he wasn't complaining or anything. Working against Omar Payne right now. Murphy Coburn on the bench with one foul. He's played nine minutes, seven points, four rebounds. And Corbello chased by Finnessy. I love Rock Finnessy when he's healthy. He's one of the best home ball defenders in the league. Johnson. Two points, just one for four from the floor to start. He's had to work awfully hard. The lob to Trace Jackson Davis looking for the one hand splash, and Plummer grabs the rebound. This is a fast team on the floor for the Illini. Offensive rebound for Payne. Plummer will leave it for Williams. Good Plummer defense. Again. Really good defense. And the rebound to Galloway. I mean, Boy, Indiana is really locked in. They're together here in the first half, not allowing too many open looks. Which is three for nine on layups right now, Stephen. Yeah. There will be a conversation about that at halftime. I, you know, Coach Underwood wants to take advantage of those opportunities, especially in a game like this. Four on the shot clock. Going to have to hurry. Galloway wrap around to Finnessy for three. And over the backboard and stuck against the camera. I believe you win a stuffed animal if you can get it stuck up there at the Big Ten tournament. So congratulations. Yeah, they tried to get one of the bigs from Illinois to come out. Oh, well, and here comes Omar Payne trying to save the day and the game. Will we play on? Omar Payne, the only ball we have in the entire building is up there. Can he get it down? No, just punch it, young fella. Dude. There it is. The tournament is not canceled. We will continue. Omar Payne, savior of the Big Ten men's basketball tournament. Kevin, you nailed that. One. That was great. <laughs> and see here, ladies and gentlemen, he, he he was doing the wrong technique at first, and then he said, "Let's do this hockey." <laughs> Carbello. It's quarterfinal Friday. We're just getting started, folks. Sorry. Coburn inside, blocked away, but Hawkins there to clean it up. Wow. Hawkins showing you his length, Kevin. He never recoiled. He just kept it high and put it right back up. Coming off an 11-rebound game against Iowa in their last matchup, so Hawkins playing at a high level. He's very happy Omar Payne got that basketball down. Galloway on the run, rebounded by Coburn, his fifth board. Now the push, now the pace, now Plummer with the three. See, that's why you have to be careful against the Illini. You take a bad shot and you're off balance uh, defensively getting back, they will take advantage of that. Johnson with the pull up to get these Illinois fans back in their seats here in Indy. I'm telling you, he's locked in, Kevin. He's had two pull up jumpers with guys inside his jersey. And still able to knock him down. Four for Johnson today. Plummer will try again. Plummer a little bit short. Right out to Curbelo. 
as casual a rebound as you'll ever see. On both ends. Frazier against Johnson. This has been a physical matchup all day. And then is he trying to save it? Three to shoot for Illinois. Let's go back to the Plumber three in transition. Few better than he. I'll tell you what, this is a thing of beauty. Getting on the fast break, running the lane. Trent Frazier knows where he is. Cat finds him in his sweet spot. Excellent execution on the fast break. Where would this Illinois team be this year without the super senior transfer from Utah in Plummer? Hawkins will try that three. Shot clock winding down. And scooped up by Johnson. Johnson now in the open floor. Grace Jackson Davis. Oh, what a tough catch and finish. Coleman Hawkins thought he was fouled. Trace Jackson Davis has six. Well, Trace is a handful down in the post one on one. And it looked like Hawkins lost his balance. He was complaining to Rob Kuhneman. Maybe feeling like he got pushed down, but no blood, no foul. Lavella will spin it down to Coburn. The hook drops over Trace Jackson Davis. Yeah, that was that was beautiful. And they got to feed the big fella because you don't want him angry. You want him feeling good so that when he can score like that, Indiana has to make an adjustment and it opens up opportunities for others. I love a good post feed and few do it better than Corbella. And he has so many different angles that he can use. Good work by Finnessy to get inside for two. I'll tell you what, Rob Finnessy is playing Bulldog style. He has got biggest sauces when he saw Andre Corbello guarding him. Corbello's going to have to buck up a little bit because he's going to get he's going to get some physical play thrown at him. And that's a whistle and a foul on Finnessy on the floor. His first team seventh free throws coming for Illinois after the timeout. Uh, you see Trace Jackson Davis being as strong or shooting in this first half and you credit that a lot to the defenses they're facing They've really played a clean game from taking care of the ball only two turnovers for Indiana only one for Illinois in this first half And that's surprising Kevin because both teams really pressuring pretty well in the half court defensive set There's not a lot of easy movement. Everything is contested. So Both both teams locked in in terms of taking care of the rock Corbello, two points, four rebounds, one assist in nine minutes off the bench. How close is he to how close is he to being able for you to declare that he's back wholly from the concussion? Kevin, I'm gonna be honest, we may not see that this season. You know, uh, because he's such a dynamic player. When you lose two months in the middle of the season, that's awfully tough to overcome. Or it's so much practice time lost yes. during that time. Yes. And the thing is, we have to remember, he wasn't able to do anything during that time. Really nice play by Rob Finnessy to get that ball away. And Xavier Johnson will find Finnessy through Stewart on the trail. And Finnessy able to put it down and bring Indiana within one. I think Xavier Johnson thought, I believe, that Parker Stewart was going to get that shot. And then Parker, like, hesitated and waited for Rob Finnessy. That's really good teamwork on Hoosier. State Farm halftime report coming up. Dave and the gang right here on set waiting to break it all down for you coming up on the State Farm halftime report. Indiana ball with 2.11 to play until that halftime report. Well, Kofi, showing some emotion, and I'm good with that. You know, as long as you can maintain it. Because, boy, if they had a tape of 30 years ago, I was an emotional mess. <laughs> You'd never know it. You're as cool as a cucumber sitting over here. Yeah, that's because my money on the line. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mess up the greenbacks now. Johnson driving inside, a reach in foul. It'll be just the fourth team foul against Illinois. Trying to ask for a shooting foul. Here's some of that emotion. Yeah, this is what the game is about. You know, you want players to show that they care. And, you know, there's a fine line, obviously. You don't want people to get out of control and get technical fouls, but. It's good to see Trace Jackson Davis and Kofi upset when things don't go their way. They, they care. They don't want to lose. First foul on Frazier. Fourth team foul. Missed shot by Parker Stewart. And Curbelo will navigate it up for Illinois. Ball's tie. A couple of lead changes. No team has been able to stretch this out at all. Five, the largest lead on each side. Oh, good denial by Miller Cop. And a foul is going to be called on Cop. He's frustrated. As he picks up his first eighth team foul 
for Indiana, a one and one opportunity for Colton Hawkins. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I thought, I thought, knew a cop. I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty good denial. I mean, he's on him now, body for body. I think that's probably where, I think it was Larry Serrato made that call. It might have been the body, but defensively, that was a good move by cop. Hawkins one for two today. He's got six first half points. And Pop finds the rebound. Indiana <laughs> looking for the lead. You know what Miller Cop said? Ball to the line with a rebound. <laughs> I saw his lips. That is hilarious. Johnson trying to get past Frazier. Pull up at the elbow. Won't go. Easy task to get around one of the best defenders that Illinois has ever seen. I agree. One of the best players Illinois has ever seen. Hawkins got an open look from three and he'll splash it down. His second of the afternoon. A little more of that emotion as well. Yeah, Coleman Hawkins, he's feeling good right now because he that missed layup or that missed dunk. He's really made up for it with that three-point shot there and the other one at the top of the key. Johnson once again size it up Frazier screen from Trace Jackson Davis Johnson inside back out to Finnessy off the shot fake stop and pot for Rob Finnessy Rick Finnessy has been excellent at that he's gotten inside of the first level of the defense come to a two-step stop and able to make a good decision and a use it or lose it timeout called by Illinois will return in 30 seconds there goes my heart See? It has been an up and down road for Rob Finnessy. He struggled with consistency last year, at times this year as well. Of course, battled the plantar fasciitis in his right foot. But there's no questioning what Rob Finnessy can do. Fully healthy and fully engaged. He's a talent. And playing Purdue. You know, he can play <laughs> exactly. Purdue every game. He, he leads the, the lead in scoring. Turbello turn to the corner, finds Hawkins. Can he hit another one? Not this time. And the rebound to Stewart. Halftime arrives. That shot will not count, even if it goes. 33-31. Illinois with the two-point lead after a fun first half in Indy. I tell you what, Kevin, Illinois is fortunate because they were team has been selfish offensively. This despite a three-to-one assist to turnover ratio. Woodson explained what he means is when Indiana takes a bad shot, it gives Illinois its only opportunity to get out and run, which is exactly where Illinois wants to be. Woodson said he's going to ask his team to make a minimum of three to four passes on every half-court possession unless they have a alley-oop like the one that they just tried to Trace Jackson Davis. <laughs> and Trace Jackson Davis he will throw it off Trent Frazier's leg and keep the possession for the Hoosiers as we start this second half. Game one of four on quarterfinal Friday on the Big Ten Network. I guarantee you Rick Pizzo and Kevin Cooper that Mike Woodson got that from Bob Knight. That was something back in that day that those coaches did along with Lou Henson. If you were struggling, you had a minimum of three or four passes before you can look and score. And Xavier Johnson gets Indiana even with his sixth point of this ballgame. He has been so good when he is locked in and emotionally even killed. He has really propelled this offense. Colburn, nice feed to get it inside from Hawkins, but then taken away by Parker Stewart. Here's Johnson. No turnovers today, despite being harassed by Trent Frazier all afternoon long. Grace Thompson saddled with foul trouble in that first half. Only played eight minutes for Indiana. Here's Johnson. Stewart will try from deep. That three won't go. Coburn tips the rebound to Demonte Williams, who's able to secure it on the deck. Well, I'll tell you what, Demonte Williams, Trent Frazier, two guys that have been around this league a long time. They make plays like that. To secure wins. Frazier's jumper won't go. There's another play that Williams makes. Climbing up to get the rebound. And now Coburn to work. Likes the matchup against Thompson. Williams, a little crossover. Nowhere to go with it. Six on the shot clock. Frazier against Trace Jackson. Davis down the baseline. Oh, Hangs up and in. What a play. There was a slither of room for him to get that shot off and was able to make it and get it down past the pressure. Eight for Frazier. Johnson hesitates. Coburn right there to stop him. Throws it up. And Coburn with his second personal foul. 
take a look here. So Indiana's going on the bounce. Look at that hard double, forcing the pass out. And then as the shot clock winds down, look at that finish by Trent Frazier. Tell you what, we look back in the record books and the guy that came in and helped change the program, I'm going to point to Trent Frazier. He has done so much for this Alana program. Stayed throughout a John Gross commit. That's right in this program And the impact he's made as it's grown under Brad Underwood Is it's hard to characterize how much of an impact he's made in this in this program over the years And you know he's the type of player Kevin that he doesn't say a whole lot He doesn't do he's not above the rim But he just makes plays just makes winning plays all the time Baseline drive on out of bounds off the leg Brad Underwood erupting off the bench. Thirty-five, thirty-four. Johnson will walk it up for Indiana. One point game. Johnson on the attack, and Frazier stripped it out of his hands, off his chest. And there's the first Johnson turnover. It goes back to Illinois. So Trent Frazier loses it down there, and then all of a sudden he makes a play to get it right back. Again, those type of plays, Trent Frazier, DeMonte Williams, can make all day long. Hawkins, Robin to Coburn. A good position early. Working around Trace oh, Jackson wow. Davis with a rejection. Oh, goodness, what a challenge. You don't see that very often. Kofi Coburn getting his uh, shot blocked. <laughs> Great timing by Trace Jackson Davis. Mike Woodson has said of Trace Jackson Davis, he's like he jumps off a trampoline when he gets up to block a shot. He needed to get up off the trampoline for that one. His pop can't connect on the three. Lob ahead to Coburn. Good catch, spins underneath. That's patience for the big man. Yeah, that's a great job, too, on that catch. That was a, a tough pass, but he's able to corral it, take his time, and finish. 11 for Coburn. Johnson looking on the drive. The dump down to Jackson Davis for the flush. Boy, Johnson has been stellar here. Even yesterday and carry over to today, he's playing under control, setting up his teammates beautifully. Here's Coburn again, in position that time, and an easy finish for the big man. I mean, quick going with his offhand away from Trace Jackson Davis. Nice adjustment. Johnson around that screen. There's Jackson Davis. Oh, what a spin baseline. Oh, Went right man. around Coburn. Oh, man. I won't say James Worthy, but it's worthy of notion. <laughs> worthy of mentioning right there on the baseline. That was beautiful. We are seeing the bigs go head to head here. Frazier will break up the big spell with a three. Kofi is sucking wind. Brad Underwood's ignoring him. <laughs> he don't want to get him out of the game. Next dead ball will be immediate time. That's right. He'll get his breather. Johnson driving. Coburn had enough energy for that one. And he knew as he sent it to the third row that he'd get a breather now because it's the timeout. In Indianapolis. Great defensive play without fouling it. The Badgers against Michigan State, then Jaden Ivey and the Boilermakers take on Penn State. All tips off tonight at 6 30 Eastern, presented by TIAA on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Indiana down by four. Grace Thompson will go to work against Coleman Hawkins. Coburn on the bench for the moment. Goes up top, Race Thompson for three, and a big bucket for Indiana. Yeah, he was hesitant to pull up for the three earlier in the game. That was a good decision. Coleman Hawkins was playing him on the drive. Elevates and knocks it down. Only the second made three of the day for the Hoosiers. Just two for seven from behind the arc. And interesting, too, Kevin, that both teams not shooting a ton from long range today, focusing more getting into the paint. Williams, here's Plummer. Jump stop in the lane. That little floater won't go, and Thompson with a good rebound. Indiana can regain the lead. They've won seven straight games in this building 
An eighth straight likely secures their NCAA tournament berth. And Race Thompson trying to make sure that he does his part. Well, he'll start down here in the post, come up and set the ball screen action. Coleman Hawkins in drop coverage. Swing back out. Hawkins a little hesitant to close out hard. Race Thompson's like, man, finally. It's <laughs> the look of a man who shot about 25% from three this year and was happy to see one go down in a big moment. Hold underneath and stay on the center of the floor. Second foul. Underneath on Payne. Omar Payne asking, what, you know, what can I do defensively? Seem to be talking to the officials there. See if he can adjust, because if not, he's going to have to come out. Right out on Race Thompson to make sure he didn't get that baseline jumper. Hawkins played well with that. Yes, he has. Ball picked away. Corbello up the floor on the move. End to end. And a foul is going to be called on Parker Stewart as he threw that one up and then he's got springs on his feet pulled out of the cheerleaders. I tell you what, this is a heck of a tracking of the basketball. Corbello was seeing it coming the whole way. Steps in and gets the steal. Look at this. <laughs> the guy has some fun with life, doesn't he? Oh, boundless energy. Ah! About 10 seconds from going in the air, he walks over. Under his Hugs our stage manager, Gale. From a high five to Dick Boss on our stats man. I mean, he was, went into the truck, said hi to Glenn Hallis and Billy Crocker, our producer director. <laughs> Actually put together a few highlight packages for you later on. <laughs> He's doing it all. He's doing it all. Grace Thompson with the rebound off the miss. Come back and remember that 14-30 mark of the second half. A couple of missed free throws there. See if Indiana can get some momentum off of it. Johnson, eight to shoot. Here's Galloway. Some excellent minutes in the first half for Galloway. The lob into Trace Jackson Davis gonna have to hurry. Goes baseline. Look at all the line eye around. They tie it up, and it's Illinois ball. RJ Melendez was great on the weak side defense coming in and getting getting that tie. Mike DeCourcy, tournament projections. Indiana a 12 seed in the last four in. Really underlining the importance of this game, not only as they continue their quest for a tournament championship. But to secure their bid to the NCAA tournament, R.J. Melendez, the little pirouette, but he can't finish at the rim. And Pop will secure it for Johnson. Trace Jackson Davis won't get credit for a block that time, but he forced that miss. Melendez is really good going to the bucket, but he was cognizant of Trace Jackson Davis's presence. Hard not to be when he gets it going down low. Right. Johnson around that screen, driving inside, rejected by Payne. Six to shoot. Thompson gonna have to hurry in traffic. Thompson muscles it up. He'll go to the line. The shot clock was down to one. And Race Thompson just stayed with it. That's some work. Oh, watch this elevation. Look at that block. Excellent timing. Johnson thought he was clear. Payne comes from nowhere. Third foul on Omar Payne, the transfer from Florida. His world kind of changed a little bit. He came into Illinois this year thinking Kofi Coburn was not going to be at Illinois and figured he'd be the starting center at Illinois. And all of a sudden, Kofi said, you know what, I'm coming back. <laughs> so life in Champaign is not bad at all, says Kofi Coburn. Kofi will make his way back on the floor after the third foul on Payne. Devontae Williams returns and Coleman Hawkins. We'll sit down this April spring football is back on the Big Ten Network as the quest to build the champion begins again. Don't miss live coverage all April long on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Neither team really able to get away from the other. Line item. Slightly more than two, two and a half minute scoring drought. So Really, neither team has been able to get any separation here this afternoon, Kevin. One point game again. We've just gone back and forth. And now it's the Illini offense that's gone cold. Almost three minutes without a point. Frazier will try to change it. Cannot rebound Grace Thompson. Xavier Johnson now. Around the screen from Trace Jackson Davis. Hill attack, driving inside. Somehow changed in the air and got it to go down. Well, that was pretty. 
Oh, I think he changed his mind three times when he <laughs> left the floor. Rarely does that go down when you do that in midair. That's right. 7-0 Indiana run. Entry to Coburn. Trying to change that run. Nice play by Trace Jackson Davis just to swat it away. And, and good defense to force the miss. Tennessee. Back it goes to Jackson Davis. Williams a little big. Jackson Davis down the baseline, spins, reverse, muscles it in. He's got 12. And he does a great job of going baseline and utilizing that rim to protect from the shot block. Indiana matching its largest lead at five. Nobody's been able to get further from the other than five points today. Curbelo, jump stop, tough fadeaway, and the air ball caught by Johnson. Indiana looking to push in transition. Jump pass to Galloway. Illinois got recovered quickly. And the Indiana crowd wants Trace to go one-on-one. -on -one. Working against Goody. Curbelo in there to try to take it away. And a tie-up. It's going to stay on this end of the floor with Indiana. But the Hoosiers getting it done from the backcourt and the front court. Yes, they are. Johnson has been spectacular. Seven in the second half, outscoring Illinois 16 to 9. Rich Pizzo. Kevin, you can't have Trace without Race. And Race Thompson has been a huge part of this second half as well. Knocked down that three and a couple of big free throws there as well. And it comes as no surprise. Mike Woodson speaking directly to Race Thompson about the need for him to be more aggressive and hunt his own offense here in the second half. Even during play as the action was going on, Woodson talking with Thompson. And amazingly, he's listening as well. Johnson had to hoist that one. Shot clock was almost out. No choice there for Xavier Johnson, but not what Mike Woodson was looking for off the timeout. Watch Illinois get the ball to Kofi Coburn, point blank range. There's Coburn. Finnessey doubles down back. It goes around to Williams. And a bump on Finnessey. That'll be his second, team's second. Coming for Illinois down by five. They have not scored in the last four minutes and 47 seconds. And since the missed free throws on a 5 0 spur, Williams entered to Colbert. That's a way to break a drought. Yeah, they, Illinois, whenever they struggle scoring the basketball, Brad Underwood usually gets Kofi in good position. And the floor spacing was excellent that time by the Illini. Over 1,500 points now in the career of Kofi Coburn. That's pretty impressive. That man has gotten better and better each year. Ten to shoot. Fantasy. Back to Johnson. Trying to direct some late offense. Thompson in the corner. Hunt his shot and finding it again. Oh, they are a terrific tandem along with being roommates. Trace and Race. Race is the, is the better chef. Trey says he cleans up. Ray says he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like roommates. Yes, yes. They're a really good tandem when both are feeling good about themselves. What a pass. And what a finish. Coburn and a hold. He's going to get a chance for one more. Or is it a foul underneath against Illinois? I don't think they're going to call. They're not going to count the bucket. Larry said the foul occurred on the floor before Kofi got to a shooting motion. See it again here. That's a heck of a wraparound post feed by Coburn. That wave off the bucket. There's Serrano with the call that Coburn was fouled by Trace Jackson Davis before the shot, his second personal foul. As it turns out, not a bad foul. Took two off the board. Coburn will go to work again. And this time, Ooh. Coburn plowing the road. Trace Jackson Davis says, hey, he plowed it a little too significantly. Knocking me out of the way. He's got 17. I'm telling you, it's not an easy thing to do to knock Trace off the balance like that. But when you keep your hands on the basketball like Kofi does, you get away with some of that contact. And right back at him, Jackson Davis says no, but Race tops in there for the offensive rebound. See, as, as, as tough as DeMonte Williams is, we have a little brush up. It's, you know. Xavier Johnson likes it. <laughs> yeah. See if there were ever a foul or two missed along the way. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know what? Like the, the, the officials that we had, Jim Bird, rest his soul, uh, you know, they did a great job. And they still allowed a lot of contact. You know what I mean? <laughs>
to the elbow. <laughs> Body's falling all over the floor here. Johnson looking. There's a wet spot on the floor. You see all those guys? Yep. Everybody's slipping on the same spot yep. with the logo there. Yep. And the foul goes on Corbello. It'll be his third. I mean, someone felt you, there's <laughs> he slips. Jo Johnson slips. Corbello arguing. How could I foul anybody? I was on the floor. I'm falling down. Yeah, Brad Underwood making sure they get that floor dry. I don't want to get anybody injured in this scenario. So we, we got a great game on our hands coming down the stretch here. See how versatile these mops are. We saw it save a basketball in the first half. Now it's mopping the floor, which I believe is its intended purpose. Man, it's, get your sneakers in there, man. You don't need a mop. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing here? Get your sneakers in there. Steven Bardo, I did not see you anti mop, but there we are. Tomorrow, the 2022 Big Ten Hockey Tournament presented by Rocket Mortgage continues the semifinals. Wolverines clash with the Fighting Irish. Gophers and Nittany Lions face off live coverage tomorrow, 6.30 Eastern on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. <laughs> 11 now after the two free throws for Johnson. Six-point advantage for Indiana, 9.39. To go. We have got a good one brewing here in Indianapolis. We're going to work Coburn down in the post here. Good job by Trace Jackson Davis keeping him out of the post. He's working hard down there. Curbelo into Hawkins in the corner. Oh, what a three for Coleman Hawkins. His third of the afternoon. He's got 12. That's a great counter by the Illini. Indiana working so hard to keep the ball out of the paint. You swing it cross court. Hit Coleman in the shooting pocket. He does the rest. Thompson working against Hawkins. Turns. Hook swatted away. Kofi Coburn and Curbelo secures the basketball. Looking to push. Here's that pace that Brad Underwood's looking for. Hawkins wanted to get it inside. They like the matchup. Coburn down there with Race Thompson on it. Curbelo, wraparound pass to Plummer, fakes the three, the step in two, pinballs out. Been a slow day for Plummer, just two for ten from the floor. And see, Indiana did a good job because Plummer wants to catch and shoot. When you make him dribble, he's a less effective jump shooter, so good job by Indiana. And Indiana's going to take a timeout, catch their breath, work on a plan, three-point game because Coleman Hawkins found the range again. Corner pocket. That's a sweet look. Since 2003, have the Hoosiers won multiple games in a Big Ten tournament? Yeah, I agree, Kevin. That, that's really hard to believe. It. As, considering how well they play in this building and how many times the conference tournament has been here in Indy. Won seven straight in this building. Not just Big Ten tournament, but they played the Crossroads yep. Classic in here. Yep. Eight to shoot. Finnessy with four on the shot clock. Trace Jackson Davis, two to shoot, one to shoot. Left it a little short. There's Curbelo in there to get the rebound. In that scenario, I want Rob Fennessy to make a play. You don't give it to your big that late in the shot clock. There's not much they can do with it. Bounce inside to Coburn. That was just terrific from Andre Curbelo. So many angles on his post entry feeds. And then the soccer player hits it with his head as it comes through the net. <laughs> One point game again. Fennessy. Trying to make a play for Jordan Geronimo. See how Kofi stayed on his feet? Didn't go for a fake. Stayed at home defensively. Drive inside. Oh, Johnson. Man. Boy, that is nifty, crafty, whatever word you want to use to describe what Xavier Johnson can do when he gets flowing toward the rim. You know what that is? That's called grown man strength. <laughs> That's what that is. He certainly has that 13 for Johnson. Lob to Coburn. Tough ball to handle. And a foul is going to be called underneath against Xavier Johnson. First foul on Johnson. Fourth as a team. Illinois fans. Indiana. You know, they fought through some frustration, especially 
Kofi Coburn early in the, in the game, but think about this. He was frustrated early. He's got 19 points. I mean, 8 of 13 from the field. Both of these guys are very efficient when they get their opportunities. Curbelo all the way to the rim. What a beautiful play off the timeout at a one-point game. And that is really going to frustrate Indiana head coach Mike Woodson during that last timeout. He told his team, we cannot allow layups. He was specifically talking about Kofi Coburn. Went so far as to say the next guy that gives up a layup to the big fella is coming out of the game. Remember, Indiana not in foul trouble and Coburn not a good free throw shooter. So if Indiana's going to go down, they are not going to allow going down with Kofi Coburn being the guy to beat him. Five on four, Plummer with the three, it won't go. Coburn secures the rebound, and it's taken away, but a foul is called. Injured player on the other end of the floor is Jordan Geronimo, who went down grabbing his right knee. That did not look good. That young man, I don't, I'm hoping he doesn't have to get up. They don't let him put weight on that knee. That's it. That did not look good. No. Xavier Johnson called for the foul to finally stop the action. Here's Jordan Geronimo right here. Let's take a look at what happened. Wow. It could have been a hyperextension of his. Could be. Oh, it looks like a turned ankle or even his knee. That that looks severe. Let's hope it's not. Because they're looking at the inside of his knee. Illinois. Frazier will back it out to Hawk. Back to Frazier again on the attack. Frazier driving inside, kicks it back out. Curbelo, five to shoot. Frazier, three in the corner. Short. Hawkins soaring in for the rebound. The no look to Plummer. Plummer for three. Cannot find the range. The tip won't go. And finally for Indiana, Galloway able to secure it. I'm telling you, Illinois can't get much better looks, Kevin. They had several high-quality looks that time, just not able to convert. Johnson now with the pace squarely on the side of Indiana. A 54-53 game with 5.38 to go. Johnson attacking. Colbert there to change his mind. Finnessy looking for the three. Colbert the rebound. Good look by Indiana. Nice. What a pass. Oh, what a feed and a foul. Curbelo pulling another rabbit out of the hat. Fitted in there on the run. Look at this again. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't see that at the NBA level. That's full speed wrapping around two defenders and hit Coleman Hawkins in stride. This is unbelievable. And Coleman Hawkins, uh, his teammates are going to get on him because you got to finish that. That is one of the best passes you will ever see in any basketball game ever. Uh, Kevin, I'm telling you, you don't see that at the NBA level. That, that is sight, that's instinct, and that's ability, all in full speed. Capello doing a little coaching as well on the follow through for Hawkins after the missed first free throw. Well, when you see him start to do that, you know he's locked in. Sometimes, you know, he's there, and then sometimes he floats, but he's all in right now. Man, we are tied up. 5.25 to go. Here we go again. Big 10 basketball always delivers. Johnson, 18 to shoot. Crossover, lost it. Coburn found it. Illinois got numbers if they hurry. Curbelo only knows how to hurry. Hawkins for three. Hawkins gave Curbelo the assist back that he lost on the other end. And a timeout. Indiana. Demons on that shot. Boy, just his second game in double figures since November 26th. The attend against Ohio State. And now has 19 points in the Big Ten tournament and has hit, well, or 16 points rather, has hit four three pointers. And you know what? He's taken up for the lack of the, the absence of Jacob Grandison in fine fashion here this afternoon. Out with that shoulder injury that he suffered against Penn State. Trace Jackson Davis, catch and finish. Caught it with one hand on the run and took it to the rim. He's got 14. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like for you to catch the ball at the top of the key and have a 285-pound, 7-foot man tracking you all the way to the rim. And you have enough touch to put it in off the glass.
would you wish that on people? That sounds like a terrible thing to do. <laughs> Trey Galloway will bring it up the floor. Galloway to work. Coburn lurking. Jackson Davis from the foul line rattles it down. The mid-range game has not always been kind to Trace Jackson Davis. You're right. And you know what? There was no hesitation there. He, he looked around. There was no defense. He said, you know what? I can knock this down. Some NBA scouts who are watching this have had their eyebrows raised a little bit on that jumper. Turbello, jump pass. Plummer sends it out to the hot-handed Hawkins and a foul on Trey Galloway. First on Galloway, 17th foul. Free throws coming up and some reaction, some emotion, some fire today. The line the one and one after the foul on Galloway before the timeout. Now, free throws have been a problem for Illinois today. Nine of 16 at the line. Indiana 7 of 8 at the stripe today. And rattled that one home. And Hawkins looking back to his free throw coach, Andre Curbelo, who's given him <laughs> some pointers before the shots the last time. And Andre Curbelo doing a little bit of everything except selling posters at halftime. Just directing, throwing nice dimes, getting to the bucket. Colton Hawkins 2 for 2. At the charity stripe, and Illinois back on top, 59-58. In the shoot, Trace Jackson. Davis able to get it to hang and fall. And another lead change, the seventh of the afternoon. I love it. I mean, there's mono e mono in the post going at each other. That's a heck of a finish. Corbello blocking foul. Galloway with his second. Free throws coming. Corbello the one on one. He takes his time because he knows there's not a double team coming with the spin going offhand off the glass. Just a pretty shot. Utilizing all, every bit of the rim. Trace talking about spring break plan. <laughs> Front end missed. Another miss at the line for Illinois. 11 of 19 today. That generally comes back and gets you, especially in a close game like this. And Indiana playing some of their best basketball. How about Galloway exploding from the top of the key all the way to the rim? He's got eight. So doing a good job of taking advantage of Corbello that time. He's much bigger and stronger. Took him all the way to the rim. Illinois will use its second timeout. They have two left. Indiana with one left. Both teams in the bonus. And the possession arrow move on that line for Mike DeCorsi, our bracketologist. Yeah, and they can, Indiana would be able to catch their collective breaths if they can hold on here. Now to work. Remember now, this is a short shot clock. So. Hawkins won't go. Rebound Coburn and a foul underneath. And a foul on Johnson. Galloway was making sure that it was on the floor. And in that scenario, that's, you know, you want to make the big man earn it. Yeah, free throws today have not come easy for the folks wearing the Illini orange. Covert today, 8 of 13, 19 points, 9 rebounds, 3 for 4 at the line in 30 minutes. Ninth foul against Indiana, so double bonus the rest of the way after this one and one. Pure. For Kofi Coburn. Big fella's got a nice touch at the line. I think he, you know, like most players, just continue to work on that repetition and confidence is what free throw shooting is all about. One more for Coburn. Another one point game. 2.34 to play. Indiana basketball. Now, this is interesting. They put 
They have Galloway initiate the offense this possession. They move Johnson off the ball. Let's see if they set a down screen or a staggered screen to try to get Johnson involved here. It's Jackson Davis picking it off for Galloway to get to the rim, but it bounces off into the arms of Coburn. One point deficit for Illinois as they bring it up. Galloway got downhill. He got a good look. That's pretty good execution there by Indiana. Now Corbello around the Coburn screen. Hawkins, he's at four from deep today, but his pass tip. Johnson able to save it. Grace Thompson on the run, driving inside, and an offensive oh, wow. foul. Curbelo waiting for the contact, and he takes the charge. Wow. I mean, you talking about giving up your body. Grace Thompson. Curbelo, who has been saddled with a concussion and the effects of said concussion for a good portion of this year, just stood there and took massive contact without even a thought about what he has been through this year. That takes a little courage. That takes a lot of courage. That's a great observation, Kevin. Oh, wow. Galloway with a takeaway. And then he lost the handle on the ball. <laughs> and then Carbello pats him on the back. Tells him that's a good play. Oh, the thrill of victory to the agony of defeat within the span of a blink of an eye. For Trey Galloway. And you know what? His teammates go over and give him some love. I like that. His plays have gotten the, the Hoosiers to this point right now with the one point lead. I'm sure he wants that playback, but that aggressiveness on the defensive end, that's good for the Hoosiers. 141 to go in the second half. One timeout left for Indiana, two for Illinois. Indiana will go into the one and one with an Illinois foul. Illinois in the double bonus. Shot clock at seven. Frazier after the collision at the top, weaving through traffic. Frazier the kick to Hawkins. Plummer wanted to shoot. Curbelo has to hoist. It's a shot clock violation. They didn't realize the shot clock hadn't reset, and it belongs to Indiana with 121 to go. You know who? You know who's at fault on that? Alfonso Plummer. He's got a wide open look and he gives us the shot up and that hurt the Alana in that possession. I know he has a, he's missed a few shots, but you got to take that shot when given the opportunity. Tough break for the Alana. A little aggressive counseling as he came by Brad Underwood on his way to the bench. Man, Brad's telling him, look, you're our shooter. Let it fly. Last nine seemed to make a semifinal was Iowa back in 2002, Indiana. 112 for being the next. But still a long way to go in a one-point game. That's Xavier Johnson. Trent Frazier in this situation. Great on-ball defender. Johnson, elbow jumper, pinballs out. And for Bello, rebound number nine for the guard. One-point game again. Illini trying to rally as the one seed in the co-champion. Entry, Coburn. Out it goes, 14 to shoot, and a timeout Time taken out. by Brad Underwood. One timeout remaining for the Illini, one timeout remaining for Indiana. Possession arrow, Illinois in a one point game. Season crown, and, and they had what a celebration it was at the State Farm Center. I, you know, I wasn't there, but it looked like it was lit. Hawkins. Into the backcourt to Curbelo. Shot clock at 12. Curbelo on the move with nine. Curbelo lob into Coburn. All the Hoosiers collapse, and a foul will send Coburn back to the line. He was good there just a moment ago. Trace Jackson Davis with his third. Well, Curbelo, it, it was going to happen. He was going to get the ball to Coburn. And Kofi knew he was going to get contact there. Big free throws here. Coburn, five of six. Double double is 44th career double double today. 21 points, 10 rebounds. Tie ball game. What a luxury. And you've got a big man that can hit free throws down the stretch and steps up with confidence. Kofi Coburn showing some toughness. Here to concentrate and knock this free throw down. See if he can do it again. Six for seven today for the 64% shooter. One more for Coburn. 
That's perfect again. That is a real nice form for the big man. Yes, it is. Illinois by one. Indiana with the ball. Final 30 seconds. First game of the day in Indianapolis. And a foul on Coburn. One and one now. Trace Jackson Davis goes to the line for the first time this afternoon. Pretty easy call for the officials. Anytime you come from behind and try to go for a reach, you're going to get called for that 99% of the time. And so now it's Trace Jackson Davis's turn to show some toughness to step up and knock these down. 67% on the year for Trace Jackson Davis. We started talking about the big men, and we finished talking about the big men. Maybe not where we thought they'd be at the free throw line, right. but they have played as big a part as we expected in this matchup. Front end of the one and one, trying to tie it up. Mm. He does. Love the confidence from both of these bigs. That's one thing that keeps a lot of big men off the floor late in the game. If they can't convert free throws, it's tough to keep them out there. And the Center Grove High School product calmly drains to almost a turnover on the inbound. Curbelo fortunate to get that one back. Curbelo. Ball loose again. Picks it up. Coburn. And a whistle on a timeout. Brad Underwood wanted to slow the scramble down. 15.3 seconds to go in a one-point game. Yeah, it looked a little hectic right there. And he had did a good job of heating up the basketball. Almost. And a berth in the semifinals. It's a unique-looking setup for the Illini. I'm expecting Corbello to come get the basketball, go downhill, have shooters on the wings. Here's Frazier. 13 seconds. Frazier in the corner. He fed it to the stands. A little miscommunication right here. Frazier gets downhill. Coleman eases up. But if you notice, Frazier made the pass without looking. So it was almost, I don't know if he was trying to fake out the defense or what, but. Ooh, the line eye fans reach for anything they can grab. With a foul, which you expect to come soon, it will be just one and one time. Cop is fouled. Ten and a half seconds to go. He'll go to the line for the one and one. Now he is, there's a reason he was there to get that inbound. He's a 91% free throw shooter on the year. Hasn't had an attempt today. Has missed four over the course of the season. I tip, see what he can do. I tip my hat to Indiana, man. I'm telling you, you got Trent Frazier coming downhill, and they sucked in defensively. There was nowhere for him to go, forcing that turnover. Who's has been stellar this afternoon on the defensive end? Top of the line. One and one. And he misses the front end. No timeouts for Illinois. Curbelo on the push. Nobody pushes quicker. Curbelo in the end. No. Loose ball. Trace Jackson Davis has it. He's fouled with 1.7 seconds to go. Wow. We've had a little bit of everything here this afternoon. Curbelo getting downhill. You almost think that that's going to drop, but it doesn't. Trace Jackson Davis able to corral the miss. Indiana. Looking good right now. 1.7 away from a mammoth upset that might punch their ticket to the big dance. I think it certainly will. Trace Jackson Davis still a one and one, but no timeouts for Illinois. Yeah, so that's even on the miss. That's got to be one dribble and heave. That's about all the time you have for the Illini. Two-point game. Bonus coming. 21 for Trace Jackson Davis this afternoon. Since yesterday at halftime, being challenged by Mike Woodson, he has been spectacular in his effort and his efficiency on the offensive end. 40 points in his last three halves of basketball. Not bad. Not bad at all. Left it short. 
Rebound loose. Thompson touches it. Clock runs out. Hoosiers move on to the semifinals in the Big Ten tournament. Stunning. The top-seeded Illinois fighting Illini. 65.